Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're discussing what country is better for a first trip abroad, Italy or England. We're going to be grading each country over eight different criteria to find out who the ultimate winner is. Welcome to World Wanderers. We're Alicia and Will. Come wander the world with us. First up is sightseeing and landmarks. England has Big Ben, Buckingham Palace, the Tower Bridge, Tower of London, Stonehenge, and the British Museum, which we spent like 12 hours in before I could get you to leave. <laughs> Italy, on the other hand, you have a lot of iconic sites. You have the Colosseum, the Trevi Fountain, the Vatican, and those are just the ones in Rome. You have the Leaning Tower of Pisa, you have uh, Mount Vesuvius and Pompeii, and the list goes on and on. Oh, don't forget Venice. There's like all of Venice. And Florence and Milan and then Syrac Syracuse and Sicily, many sites all over the country to visit that are all beautiful. Italy also has so much famous art because there's something to see spread out all over the country. I think we're gonna have to give this one to Italy. Definitely. Next up, we're gonna talk about the natural beauty of each country. The English countryside is beautiful. The White Cliffs of Dover are breathtaking. But Italy's coastline and the Tuscan countryside are unbeatable between Cinque Terre, the Amalfi Coast, Sicily, and of course, the world famous Tuscany. Italy has to have this category as well. For natural beauty, I agree, probably Italy. So food, this is a tough one because England has a lot of famous dishes. They have fish and chips. I'm not gonna eat those, but apparently people like them. Um, shepherd's pie, toffee, and tons of great international food as well, like Indian food, which is second only to basically India. You did definitely like the toffee waffles in England. I know, for sure. And then on the other hand, you have Italy, which is world famous for its cuisine and the homeland of pizza and pasta. Definitely hard to beat on the food front. Yeah, and, and don't forget the desserts. They have gelato, which was practically a main dish the entire time we were there. I think we had it three times a day at one point. Um, tiramisu and cannolis. Yeah, and then you have a, a more personal taste kind of category for England. You definitely have the home of ale, whiskey, and gin. On the other hand, you have Italy, which is world famous for its wines, uh, the Peach Bellini, who doesn't love one, and my personal favorite, Lemoncello. An ice cold Lemoncello after a meal or a lunch can't be beat. I think I have to give this one to Italy. Yeah, I think so too. You can't really go wrong, but food is also significantly cheaper in Italy, so you're going to get more bang for your buck there as well. All right, so safety is our next category here. In recent years, England has fallen victim to some terrorist attacks, but that's probably the main thing you're gonna think of when you think of safety in England. Italy, on the other hand, has a few more issues. Yeah, Italy is known for uh, mostly pickpockets are the main thing you're gonna face there, especially um, like in the bigger city subway systems like Rome at nighttime. And that's not to say England doesn't have those problems, it is just more prevalent in Italy. Right, I know tons of our friends who have actually personally had their wallets stolen or been pickpocketed, especially on the train. So it's definitely like, a super common occurrence. So I think for safety, we're gonna have to give England the better vote here. Yeah, I would say definitely this one would go to England. All right, uh, we'll talk about accommodations now. We've stayed in some beautiful brand new hotels and older hotels in both countries. Yeah, they both have a ton of charm for any place you wanna stay and a lot of different options between hotels, Airbnbs. Um, you can't really go wrong in either of these places, yeah. I don't think, but due to the slightly cheaper pricing again, I think we're gonna give this win to Italy. Yeah, and I'd have to agree, and that would mostly come down to pricing. It was going to be a little more expensive, but in either country, you're going to be able to find whatever kind of accommodation you're looking for. Yeah. For transportation, these countries are similar. They both have beautiful major road networks between major cities. They have underground subways, and their systems are really easy to navigate and pretty doable for anybody who's ever used public transportation before. Yeah, however, Italy does tend to have more narrow roads, especially in the cities. Um, this road signage is in Italian, so you kind of have to get used to that, what those words mean and how to navigate around that if you're a native English speaker. And uh, I would say England overall is a little easier to navigate. Definitely, so England for the win. Yeah. However, disclaimer, watch out for what are called congestion zones in England or ZTLs in Italy. If you're driving through any of the major tourist zones for those cities, they limit traffic there by charging hefty prepaid tolls that are auto billed to your license plate. Yeah, we, uh, we learned this lesson in England because we went there before we went to Italy um, and paid a lot of attention to Italy trying to avoid the ZTLs with a lot of research. And you may be a little easier to avoid now, um, but at the time, even so, we ended up running into a couple, I think in Florence, if I remember right. 
Yeah, we, we managed to find all the ones in Rome, but Florence did get us on that. Right, so we learned a valuable lesson in England um, where I got a ticket, or four, ask me how I know. <laughs> For weather, Italy, case closed. Who likes oh. rain? Not me, not at all. Yeah, that's fair. She she does prefer the sunshine, and in Italy, you're going to have more sun. Um, the one other concern here, though, is if you don't like extreme heat, Italy, especially southern Italy, can get very, very hot in the summertime, 100 plus degrees Fahrenheit. England, you're looking a little more mild climate, maybe 80, 85 degrees. Right. So, I mean, I prefer the Mediterranean climate, which, you know, you're going to have your months that aren't perfect, but the majority of the year is going to be enjoyable. For me, England, once you pass that like November-ish time frame, I'm not going to have a good time there. So I think Italy, definitely weather, they're going to win. For me, seasonal, but overall Italy. Okay. For the average person, Italy. We can agree. <laughs> <laughs> The final category is language and currency. Obviously in England, they're gonna speak English with a really great accent, by the way, but they use pounds, which are a lot less widely used than some other currencies and they tend to fluctuate more. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And in Italy, they use the Euro, which um, tends to be pretty close to the dollar. We'll say a dollar five to a dollar 10, whereas the pound is a, generally a, a larger conversion rate, making the Euro easier to use when you're just shopping around without your currency conversion app. You know, you're paying roughly what you're seeing in dollars, very similar price range. Right. However, uh, out of the 50-ish countries I've been to, I've met more non-English speakers in Italy than nearly any other country I've been to, which is kind of an outlier for Europe. Yeah, I would say definitely an outlier for Europe. It's closer on par with uh, like our trip to Mongolia, where, you know, there were a lot fewer English speakers than there are most other European countries we've been to. And we know we are definitely spoiled as Americans who basically expect the whole world to speak English and we don't have to learn another language. But as a first trip abroad, it's definitely easier if you don't have to whip out Google Translate for every little thing. So that can make it challenging when trying to order food or ask for directions or interact with the locals. So for this category, I think we're definitely gonna have to give it to England. Yeah, I would agree. As far as like ease of currency language goes, it's an obvious win for England. Right. Okay, so for our final tally, drum roll please. The score is Italy 5, England 3. I'm actually shocked. I thought England was going to have it for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I figured it would be close, but I thought England would have more points um, for a first trip, mostly based on just how easy it is for Americans to get around in England. Right, but I guess with all the other criteria, you know, that really just doesn't make up for it. So yeah. I think the takeaway here is download your Google Translate app, uh, maybe book some guided day trips or longer group tours if you're nervous about it and go to Italy. Yeah, I would say definitely for a first trip, um, Italy's a way to go. Yeah, it's definitely the best country to dip your toe into international travel and maybe fall in love with another culture. So thanks for watching. And if you want to get more tips on wandering the world, like this video and hit the subscribe button. Ciao. Ciao.